I want to know to close things out, what was the show for you or shows that made you want to do this? Mm. I'm going to cry. Oh. Hill Street Blues. Hill Street Blues. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah Hill I'm Street Blues. Cry. Hill Street Blues for me. And then to, to find myself working with Steven later, it was, it was a dream come true. It's a, this has been a very tough week. Mm. Um, but, uh, but uh, you know, he changed television. He just changed the way stories were told. And uh, that was really something. Frankie? Roseanne was pretty what influential. The reboot. <laughs> <laughs> just season 10. Just got Roseanne, in. Just Roseanne made me want to get out of television. <laughs> and then I'm like a huge fan of all these British comedies. So mm. Spaced, Blackadder, um, and then Catastrophe. Yeah. Like, so good. So good. I love, 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 uh, yeah, British humor. So those. That well. wedding ring scene? I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cheers for oh, me, great. which is makes my current job so extremely cool. weird. Yeah. Every time my phone rings and it says Ted Dance, and I think it's a prank. This <laughs> uh, oh, so I'm alone. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Uh, cheers, number one, and then Monty Python was the other great. one for me. Like I, when I was homesick, I remember being homesick when I was like eight or nine and they used to show them on PBS at like 11.30 in the morning and I stumbled onto it and it, I remember the feeling of like, oh no, I didn't know you could do this. And the first, cool. skit, the first skit I ever saw was the, was the upper class twit of the year, if you know that. It's very long and it's so funny and insane and it, it felt like, I, I felt like I was like having a fever dream. Like I it was like, oh, someone made this for me. So that, those two things. The, the silliness of Monty Python and the storytelling of Cheers. Mm. Uh, mine was probably a Larry Sanders show. Mm. Um, that was my favorite show because it, it made me uncomfortable, kind of, and I did, it just it was a feeling I never had. Like, um, I loved Roseanne too as well growing up because I loved, like, there was a domestic violence episode where Jackie got, you know, and there was the um, DJ wouldn't kiss the black old girl at the school play. I stutter when I say it. I'm so afraid I'm going to get... In trouble um, for saying a storyline that happened 20 years ago, um, and uh, I just there was, I you, it made you laugh and cry, you know, and I always sort of loved that sort of bipolar experience. Um, and then more recently, the comeback, um, I really just loved how that show could make you like hate the character, and then you love the character, and then you're rooting for the character, and then you're yell. It's like watching a horror movie, really. It's like really complicated experience. Um, I wrote on that show. Did you know that? What? Mm. <laughs> really? Yeah. First season. Really? Mm -hmm. I think it's the best. Mike Shore. I think I'm a big fan. Thanks, I'm an even bigger fan now. It was great. It I, is my favorite um, season of television. It's anything. one of the greatest. Um, I think it's the greatest. Like show. characterizations I've ever seen. Lisa Kudrow as that character is one of the most like. She was so fluent in that character. Like she could do. She would sit in the writers' room all the time. And she would do it. And she would just do be that character. And it wasn't improv. It was script. You guys scripted it very tightly. Yeah, her. but it came out of a lot of improvisation that she did in the writers' room. And she. But it was like you could put her in any situation, and she would just start talking as Valerie. It was amazing. When she um, talks about the rod on her back, I'll cry if I think about it. In the in the finale, yeah. it, it is just it is so it's a true, earned. A true and story of one of the writers. I won't give away who it was for yeah. privacy, but it was me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's an amazing, it's a wonderful characterization, and it's it's crazy how the the staying power of that show, mm -hmm. it's, given that it it had, you know, I mean, it was rebooted kind recently, of our first but reboot, yeah, but um, that first season is like. Uh, it's crazy. You don't, because it's, I mean, most shows is like, the lead has to be likable, and then this is the, it just breaks every rule of like, you love some, you love the villain for a second, like Polly G, you're on, you're on everybody's side, and you're just mad at everybody at the yeah. same time. It's like having a family, you know, you like, it's love, hate, and I think a lot of times when we get in writer's rooms, you're like, oh, that's not likable, or oh, we can't show this ugly side of a person, you know, it just, I love the, Messy, mm -hmm. you know, as yeah, we don't have that discussion on yeah, the Americans. Right. <laughs> 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 oh, no, we like this character too much. We need to change that, you know. So, I think it's just it's just the idea of writing for someone complicated and, and showing all the like ugly, nasty sides and also making them triumphant and victorious is sort of what life is like, you know. Right, yeah. So, I, I, I love those. It's a good one, Prentice. Um, uh, for me, there was two. One was uh, Cosby's show, mm -hmm. um, only because to that point I had only seen like shows about people of color where they were poor and this and that. 
And I grew up like middle class in LA and my mom was a lawyer like Claire Huxtable and she was an AKA like Claire Huxtable and my dad sold real estate and they went to black colleges. So it was like, it was like seeing yourself for the first time represented and being like, oh, like there I am. There are my friends who we get good grades. Like there, there is that life as opposed to being poor and all these other things and talking about art and jazz and painting. It was just like things that I was hearing conversations at my house and it was like seeing that finally on screen. And I mean, weirdly too, like, like Roseanne and I'll say like, that was the first time I remember watching a sitcom and being like, oh, they're ending an episode on a fight. Yep. And that's the end of the episode. It's like, that's like, also that's how my parents were. So it was also yeah, yeah. like, oh, you can end the sitcom. And like, it was the first time I saw a sitcom be different in that way, where they would just do, it would be like the whole scene would just be like a giant fight or a weird discussion or you were uncomfortable at the end. And it was like, oh, but sitcom can also do that. Mm -hmm. And that's, I remember just having that reaction to that of being like, oh, I've never seen that before usually it ends in a fun nice way and that wrapped was like yeah wrapped up in a bow and like here's the here's the funny out and it was like no this is just either like dan's cheating or you know mm -hmm. there's a fight about money and that's just like a real argument and i just was like that just really was just like oh wow this can happen